plani tunafanya na yeye hapa hivi. Kuna tikika vile zile sunset kama za kusemeka huko Sweden na Norway. Kwa sababu na wind watch kindio ile sunset huko. Unajua umekuwa Sweden. My name is Nick Ombugu. Uh, I am a director and producer for this film. My prime inspiration was uh, of course meeting several farmers and understanding how farmers are so extremely extremely passionate to farming. I ended up now uh, finding a subject uh, who is a farmer, Ezekiel. I had to literally have like meetings, like three day meetings back to back, just to understand who he is, uh, his motivation as a farmer, just everything and anything about his life as a farmer. Is it important as much as, you know, you, you have an option of getting the correct seeds, maybe, go, maybe not going well with the fungicide, like why sh every seed do you have to put the food? I could see how he's passionate about seeds and about literally just food, uh, how people eat, what people eat and all of that. I literally put myself in the shoe of the people he was talking about and he was talking about normal customers that he le delivers food. Immediately I knew that's where the story is. Hey, now where is he? We wanted to make it an extremely character-driven kind of story whereby the story runs by itself. But also, also of course, realizing we, ha we have to put in a pedigree as an organization in the story. Hey, uh, my name is uh, Maurice Muraga and I'm the cinematographer behind this documentary. As a cinematographer, my uh, go-to style for this was something very verite, you know, and you know, not really get in the way of how the subject was moving around and how he was conducting his day-to-day. -day. As a filmmaker, especially when working on documentaries, it's uh, imperative to be the fly, you know, on the wall. My main goal was to be present, you know, in the room, but not to present that uh, my presence you know affects the, the narrative I had to find you know nice ways to keep it 100% real but at the same time frame it very cinematically you know even the the style of the lenses we went for um, we went for cinema cinema lenses. Uh, we went uh, for a um, very cinematic uh, camera and the whole process I just wanted to make sure uh, the standards are kept high but the approach in itself is very organic. You know we had to do some crazy uh, early mornings, you know the normal farmer's time Farmers start really early in the farms and, and deliveries were starting pretty early. I remember this one day, I had to be up for a 3 a.m. call time and that was pretty nuts. But again, it comes with a job, so there's nothing to cry about. It's a story that uh, has a lot of social impact and social good in it. One of my biggest uh, references while preparing for this was was a body of work by Emmanuel Lubeski. I love him as a cinematographer, I love his style, and I really wanted to emulate it. Um, a lot of use of natural light, you know, candid uh, movements and candid um, approach generally to the photography, but more so to marry that with a very cinematic sense. Hi, my name is Zahara Maniva, first AC and second camera op for the SSP and Pedigree documentary. As an AC, I'm largely guided by my DOP, Maurice. He basically just gave me a rundown of everything that he wanted, what his shots were going to look like. And from that, I was able to assemble the rig that we had. Just understanding how a set works and 
what my DOP is doing and what I'm doing so we can collaborate better because sometimes you're going to have two cams when you're doing a specific scene so it's just that flow and positioning just kind of understand over the course of time. In regards to my role as a producer, I need to know what my director wants, what is the scope of the project, what are the things that we're going to need in order to make sure that everyone has what they need in order to do their jobs well and under safe conditions and are least satisfied with what, with what they're doing. I think the most interesting rig that I was somewhat involved in was we were doing a car scene, so we had a car rig. So our gaffer Greg Kiwo and his assistant set up the rig just like on the side of the car. Um, the challenges we should face are just setting up a car grip um, in terms of a scene, it would be the type and model of a car. In terms of the, this project, we had um, a van, so it didn't have places where we could easily like place um, our gripping equipment. So we had to employ um, stylistic devices where we, we use uh, round pipes, uh, ratchet straps, and uh, a lot of magic arms here and there, so that we can create something we call a base. And then now the camera goes onto that whereby it ends up being uh, safely harnessed to the car. And at the end, um, you'll see from the shots, that's what uh, the magic was done. So for documentaries, you always want it to be, you can have it stylistic, whereby it's a bit dramatic, depending on the content. But for this one, it was uh, more of a light feel to it. So less, less contrasty, more of, you know, um, high key lighting. I would borrow a lot from the DP's vision and then I would go about now choosing what gear I would use. The challenges that we did encounter in this documentary uh, for lighting were one of the particular days we were exterior, so, and the weather was cloudy. Just being those sides of Limuru, it was very cold, it was very, a dull morning. There was ambient light, but no light to bounce back. So we had to light it and make sure that it doesn't look lit. We used the character's story, Ezekiel, to really um, pass the story and hook the viewer. And then now having M. Pedigree come in to really just explain what they do and using the story as the hook. M. Pedigree shot one to one. From the very beginning, uh, Nick involved me in the story consultation, which is just shaping the development of the story. And coming into this, we really planned um, the shots, we planned um, a lot of the things that we were going to be doing. So um, when it came to post-production, I'd say it was a breeze because we had the story nailed down. Having a background in farming and understanding um, just food as a whole, the food industry and the food space, I really understood what really goes into the process of farming and what's important to the um, to the end user as well as the farmer. So um, using my real life experience and understanding, we were able to weave that into the story as well. Hi, my name is Muna Chuba and I'm the sound engineer for this documentary. Depending on the style that would be more suitable for the documentary, most of the time you'd want the voiceovers to sound separate from natural interviews that you know were recorded on field. But if you don't want them to sound really too far apart, then how I'd uh, incorporate those two is using natural ambience. Most of the time when it comes to documentary, I like using natural elements. I don't, sound design most of the time is something that I try to avoid, especially when it comes to documentaries. 
then that way the, the flow of the story sounds more natural. So you lay in natural ambience in, or rather under, the voiceovers. And then another technique would be not to record too close to the mic, so that it doesn't sound too clean. Yeah. Uh, the emotional impact that I would want or I would love people or audience to have when they watch this is to appreciate, to have like an appreciation or rather to appreciate the work that farmers go through because uh, it just hit me when I was working on this project and uh, you know talking with the farmer it just hit me anytime you're eating that stew or that food you know you never think about where it came from or the farmer who you know who did all of that and it's a process from putting the seed to the soil to like to to now having your stew in the kitchen or or in your dining so the whole idea is to make people appreciate when they are eating to appreciate like where the food is coming from and of course now appreciating the farmer <laughs>